Hi everyone, I'm Eric Grotebois, 5 Minutes with Eric. So what we're talking about is giving interest-free loans to your employees. And the short answer is that the amount that you should have charged for interest, so the, the IRS says that the minimum is whatever the federal interest rate is. So right now I think it's four and a half, I, I'm not really positive, but whatever that is, that's what you should be charging for interest. And so since you didn't charge it as interest, it can be considered taxable income. Right? And on top of that, if a loan isn't paid back, that's considered a gift. So there's a lot of little tricky parts to this. Now, here's the way you should be doing it. And I say should because in my fact pattern, True Life, it's a, it's a potential client I just spoke with, they are not doing it this way. They're doing it on good faith, they're doing it on a handshake, and they'll do it like this. They'll say, I need a $10,000 loan. The employee says that to the employer. And, the, and then they say, how much can you afford to pay back? And the employee says, I can pay back $50 a month. Oh, I'm sorry, $50 a week, because they get paid weekly. So $10,000 divided by 50, 50, that means it's gonna be 200 weeks. So let's divide that by 52. That turns out to be a 3.8 year loan. So 3.8 years, they're gonna be paying $50 a week back. Um, but a couple things, there's nothing in writing. So they're just good faith trusting. So let's do a worst case scenario. The person takes the $10,000 loan and then they quit the next day. And so now you're not having taking anything out of their paycheck because they're not getting a paycheck. And so you, they come to me and they're like, okay, well, Eric, can I chase them down? What can I do? And the short answer is yes. The state of Florida will allow an oral contract. You can go and sue someone an oral contract. By the way, the statute of limitations is four years in Florida. Um, check your jurisdiction. Every state has differing, but it's usually a couple years, right? It's five years for a written agreement. But let's talk about the downsides. So um, you're gonna have to A, prove the loan. Okay, maybe we can show the wire transfer or we can show the distribution or maybe there's an email back and forth or a text message. So we're proving the loan. That's because a lot of times in oral contracts you have he said, she said. Whereas if it's in writing, then here, your honor, here's the contract. See right there, it says 10,000. If you want me to, I can prove that we made the payment um, and, and, and whatever. But again, we're not talking about a written contract. So now we're suing and the problem is we're suing on a breach of an oral contract under the common law. And if you've watched some of my other videos, there are no attorney's fees under the common law in most circumstances. And so the way we get attorney's fees is by having a contract. So if somebody comes to me and says, Eric, somebody stole $10,000 from me. And I say, did they have a contract? And the person says, no, they didn't. Then I might say, Listen, I mean, we charge $2,000 refundable retainer to send a demand letter and then hopefully to negotiate some sort of resolution, but that's coming out of your pocket unless you can somehow convince them to add that to the debt. Like, let's say we send the demand letter and they're really nice and they're like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And they say, okay, we'll pay you back. And we're like, okay, well now you owe us $12,000. Now, hopefully they agree. They don't necessarily have to agree. They might say, no, like F off. Um, your attorney's fees are not my problem. And technically they're right. Um, or we can sue them, same, same fact pattern. Now we're technically in what's called county court. So here in Florida, we've got small claims, county, and then circuit. Um, the level is $30,000 and above for circuit. So we're in county court, which is more user friendly. You get a lot more people representing themselves. It's a little bit more sophisticated than small claims. Um, but still, at the end of that day, you're not getting your attorney's fees back under the common law. So we're doing, you know, I, I, I'll ask them um, for a county court case, maybe a $3,500 retainer, but I gotta tell you, our minimum retainer is really five grand. And, and so in real life, I say without a contract, without an attorney's fee clause, or without a huge amount of money at issue, it might be better to just walk away, learn your lesson, and next time do it the right way. So let's talk about what the right way is. The right way is to have a signed agreement with a minimum amount of interest, the rate of interest, what we normally do for friends and family is the prime rate plus 1%. So if let's just use, let's assume the Federal Reserve rate is 4.5% right now, then plus one is 5.5%. And we put it in writing. Our contract that we use for friends and family is a pretty short agreement, but it does include the provisions that'll protect you in the horrible situation where we actually have to go to court and I need to enforce it. So we're gonna pick our form selection, Miami-Dade. We're gonna pick our law, Florida law, Remember under Florida law, I did another video, usury, which means charging too much interest. Maximum amount in Florida is 18% a year. So don't charge more than that on loans under $500,000. And in any case, we're gonna have it in writing. Maybe we'll have a witness. We're gonna initial every page. We're gonna sign at the end in blue ink. We're gonna scan it, photocopy it, keep it in their permanent file. And then hopefully one day we'll satisfy the loan and it'll be done. 
Or in a worst case scenario, you come talk to me and I'll go, did you have a contract? And you'll say yes. And I'll look at it and I'll be like, yes, there's an attorney's fee clause. Let's go get him. All right, guys, my name is Eric Rodebois. Five minutes with Eric. Talk to you soon.